Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on crypto. Hope you're having a great day. So there are a number of things that are going on. The U.S. Federal Reserve released their annual report on the U.S. outlook on uh, finances, you know, finances in the household, and came out with some remarkable numbers regarding crypto. We'll get into that. Um, Governor Andrew Bailey of the Bank of England this guy is interesting. Um, he does agree with the importance of blockchain and uh, distributed ledger technologies, right? But on the other hand, he's kind of like, yeah, cryptocurrencies as a payment system. Bleh. I think it's funny. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, the debate is very big with regard to central bank uh, digital currencies. And right now, U.S. bankers are truly digging in because they think CBDCs are going to have a negative impact on the uh, establishment of banks and financial institutions. No shit, Sherlock. We'll get into that one, too. Um, Kristalina Georgieva, please, if I'm mispronouncing that name, please reach out to me and, and tell me how to pronounce it properly. I apologize to you right now. Um, it's really bad. She is the head of the International Monetary Fund. And her aspect or her, her view is, listen, crypto technology, CBDCs play an important role going forward as they have an inclusion kind of, uh, they're more inclusive than current financial infrastructures. And I really want to get into that one. But let's start with the Federal Reserve. Now, this is actually pretty cool. So they're saying in 2021, there were 12% of Americans that were, you know, involved in crypto technologies or involved in cryptocurrencies. 12%. Now, that's not a lot of people until you realize how many people are actually in America. And that's about, three, you know, 310 million or so, give or take, whatever that number is. Um, and I could be wrong. It could be, I think it's 330, but I, let's not even worry about that. But 12% of that number, greater than 100 million, let's just say, um, are involved in cryptocurrency. Here's something else. 60% of those people involved in cryptocurrency earn less than $100,000 a year. Now, when you think about that, you sit there and you kind of go, holy crap. Something else to consider is, I think the number, let me just verify the number for you. Um, it, I think it was something like 30, 27% of those people don't have a credit card. Of that 12%, 27%, greater than a quarter of those people do not have a credit card or, or bank accounts. I think the number is larger for bank accounts. So that means that unbanked Americans are turning to crypto more. Now, if you look at the debate that there is not a lot of adoption with regard to crypto, well, that's because, you know, not a lot of stores or service providers allow you to pay via crypto. So they kind of go hand in hand, right? You offer the idea of paying in crypto, more people pay in crypto. The more people pay in crypto, the more stores will want to be involved in crypto. So my company, Rebel Vino, I mean Rebel Visions, is about to launch a new service as a part of our Rebel Reach hosting platform where people will be able to pay with different types of cryptocurrencies, not just the normal Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're introducing a lot more coins than that. And you will be able to host with us, with host your e-commerce website with us. And we're already integrated with Authorize.net. We're already integrated with PayPal. And now we're integrating going full-blown Web3 with cryptocurrencies. Why? Because small businesses are the backbone of the United States. The backbone of the United States. And we need to make it easier for them to actually prosper. So our model is also different. We're not going to be reaching into your pockets on every single freaking transaction that happens. No more percentages. So looking at those numbers, 60% um, of the people that earn, 60% of the people involved in cryptocurrency earn less than $100,000. 
not let's not look at it as well 40 percent of the people of involved in crypto earn more than a hundred thousand dollars no that's not the story that is not the story the story is 60 percent of the people using crypto earn less than a hundred thousand dollars let that wash over you for a second people that earn less than six figures are involved in crypto if i'm a store owner i want to tap into that and i want to grow that reason why i get more of my money if you pay me in crypto i did a video on that go check out my video on on the 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 process of credit card transactions versus the process and cost of crypto transactions. I get more of my money and I get it fast. We're talking same day. Now for business, same day is awesome, but I'm also talking about minutes, if even minutes, right? Some of these transactions can happen in seconds. So when I think about that, I'm going to get my money now fast. And I'm going to get almost all of it. Yeah, I'm going to be all about crypto. I'm going to do that lickety split. Now, the pe people out there are thinking, well, you know, there, there's no adoption. There's no, listen, yeah, there's no adoption. I know that I'm not quite, I know you see that I'm old. <laughs> but that said, I know that our parents remember when there was no such thing as a damn credit card. I remember as a kid, that they were still trying to sell the use of credit cards. MasterCard versus Visa versus Discover versus American Express. Don't you remember that? Those were huge battles. Number of stores that allow our, you know, that accept our card. That was a big deal. This is recent times. We're going to go through that same thing with crypto until crypto becomes as ubiquitous as a credit card. And then once it becomes as ubiquitous as a credit card, you're going to wonder why you're using a credit card. You will, you will actually manage your finances better by using crypto because you'll be forced to use, you're using cash basically, right? Or the cash equivalent. So you're going to pay attention to what you're doing. And if you do that, you won't allow yourself to get into credit card debt. You'll start to realize that, you know, if I allow this store to earn more money, it's their money. If I allow that store to earn more money, I'm probably going to do better because that store is going to price their items going forward better because they'll be earning more. The people that work at the stores might actually earn more. There's a ripple effect to the implementation of something that's leveraging a cash kind of society and less of a debt driven society. So there are a lot of reasons why I like crypto a lot. Now, Andrew Bailey of the bank of England is just, dude, you amaze me. You blow my freaking mind. If anybody knows him, please let him know. He blows my mind. You don't see it as a, as a payment system. I, I give it 12 months before he comes back and goes, yeah, maybe it's a payment system. Because I think people make the mistake of seeing Bitcoin and then seeing altcoins and then just looking at Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum and saying, ah, it's not a payment system. And I sit there and I go, it's not going to be a single coin that turns cryptocurrencies into a payment system. It's going to be many coins based on preference, based on utilization, based on just what people want to use. That is what is going to create that ecosystem around digital asset payments. So, Governor Andrew Bailey, I'd like to have a cup of tea with you in 12 months, 12 months. I think we'll have a really good conversation about, you know, what your views are, what my views are. And I think we'll both walk away from the table learning a little bit more. It's not a crack at them. 
because I can definitely see how, you know, there's little adoption. But 12% of the U.S. population in the United States, you know, is the leader in crypto currently. Currently. Not necessarily the use, but currently. Um, it's something to think about. It really is. Um, now, Kristalina Georgi Georgieva, it's either Georgieva or Georgieva or Georgieva. I don't know. And I really, 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 really apologize for totally destroying her name. Um, but wow, is she thinking forward? The head of the International Monetary Fund is saying, listen, don't discount the importance of cryptocurrencies and CBDCs. The level of inclusion that they bring to the table is a very big deal. Hence, everybody in the banking space is having a debate about, you know, digital dollars or digital fiat around the world. Oh, how that's going to totally disrupt. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to disrupt the current monopoly of the financial institutions that are out there. Right. How they make money without paying out money, you know, interest rates. When I look at numbers all the time, I show you guys, you know, my graph on, you know, what the best are, what the what the what the lease are. I talk about, you know, the rhythm of coins and things like that. And I show you, well, hey, you could have made five percent in a day on this particular coin. You could have lost 10 percent in a day on this coin. You could have made 30 percent in a day on this coin. Again, rhythm of coin, rhythm of specific coins, what they're doing, how they're doing it, if you're looking at it from an investment perspective. The value of those coins, as adoption continues to rise, is going to be better. It's going to be more. So I do see that adoption is going to continue. It is going to increase. Now, if I look at the possibility of a recession, I also look at the possibility that there are going to be more small businesses that are going to arise. I know a lot of women, uh, excuse me, excuse me. I know a lot of people that are selling food now. People that have always had the dream of cooking for a living, being happy, doing what they're doing, are selling dishes, selling breads, selling cookies and turning it into a business. Now, the easiest way to turn into a business, and I mentioned this yesterday, the easiest way to start a business is to use PayPal. And now I think it's use, you know, cryptocurrencies because even using PayPal has a hand in your pocket with regard to taking percentage out per, you know, per transaction. But with crypto, the fee for the transfer is about this big. So you'll get more of your money. So that that new business is going to thrive more. They don't have to calculate, you know, a 2.9% loss or whatever percentage loss, depending on where they are. Let's let's not forget about Etsy and their 6.5% hit to small businesses. 6.5%. That's a lot of money out of a hundred bucks. You're talking $6 and 50 cents. That's a lot of money to take out of a business's pocket. A lot small business, just a little business on the side, you know, to, to try to help ends meet or just to get a little extra. You got to save up for, you know, Jimmy and Jane's, you know, college education, crypto technology, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, distributed ledger, DeFi, all of these things are already disrupting the current norms and it's going to increase. It's going to increase. Anyway, let's get to the numbers because they're very interesting today. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. No, I don't want to start there. I want to start here. Let's give this a little refresh. So you can see, obviously, today, losers are beating the crap out of winners. Look at all these losers all the way down, which means it, go, it would continue down for a little bit, right? Of course, you see Terra Luna on this page. I mean, you see Terra, yeah, Terra Luna on this page. Um, Harmony is here, 11%. You know, um, Avalanche is here, 12%. 
Loopering is here taking a hit. Phantom is taking a hit. I mean, 17 and 19 percent, respectively. That those are big hits. Those are big hits. But give it a day or two, and we'll see them over here probably on the winners list, which is you know scarce at the moment, right? It's very scarce. Think about this. Terra USD is up five percent. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, UST is up 5%. Uh, wow. It was up more yesterday. So, you know, I'm paying attention to what's going on there. How that's working out. Right? Now, that's all interesting. That's all fine, well, and good. This kind of gives me an idea about who's on what, you know, which company, which, which projects were on what list at what time. I'm understanding the rhythms of these cryptos. Right? You know, because the rhythms are affected by many things, macro and micro events. And we've got a ton of my macro events that are definitely toward the negative side. So when I look at DeFi, this number was refreshed earlier. We were, you know, lower. We're kind of hovering around that, you know, 100 billion to 110, 112 billion right now. Right. And total value locked. Okay, cool. Right. I just refreshed this yesterday was at 14 day before that it was at 10 or something like that, you know, but we're still in extreme fear. I'm beginning to think that this needs to be redone. I don't know that people have extreme fear as much as there's a pullback in the market, but that's okay. Extreme fear is okay. I'm looking at it at it as continually. Everything's on sale. That's that if everything's on sale and I'm going to take advantage of it. I have been taking advantage of it. Dollar cost averaging. Now, when I look at this huge drop right here, this huge drop right here, I'm still within that smaller band that I, you know, that I've drawn out, right? I'm still within that smaller band and we're bouncing around. Yes, it's toward the bottom part, portion of that smaller band, but we haven't broken out to either side in a while, either side in a while, right? So back, what, May 12th? All right, that's 12 days ago that we haven't hit that, haven't hit that, that low. It's, and then we have all of this time, all of these times just previous to that, where we were hitting the upper band, right? The last time we actually were out of the upper band was May 9th. And then we established, we were pretty much establishing a, a, a low right here. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I have great faith in where the technology is going. I have great faith in what the cryptos are going, where the cryptos are going. But I keep telling people, do your own research. Always do your own research. I do my own research because I want to grow my bag and I want to grow it smartly. I'm looking at the technologies that are out there. I'm looking at the communities that are backing them. I'm looking at the, at the utility of each project that's there. I'm looking at the usefulness and ease of acquisition of each one of those coins. You might have a crazy useful coin, but if I can't get to it, that means I can't use it. If I can't use it, then I don't care about it. Right? There's a difference between investment and using. There's a difference between long-term investment and short-term investment. So pay attention, do your own research, take notes, get in the habit, spend 10 minutes a day reading different articles. Then you'll start to see what I see. All of these predictions, skip the predictions. You'll start to see, you know, predictions and why it should go up in, the, in, the, in one article, in the same article, and in a totally different article, rather. You'll see why it should go down, why it should go up. Ah. Go take a look at facts. Go take a look at what that project is doing. Go take a look at how big, how strong that community is. Go look to see what the utility is. Go do your own research. Again, you can listen to people like me I'm just bringing you along my journey. I'm not giving you advice or anything else except for do your own research. That's it. It's not hard to do. 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, and then you'll start to go, oh, you know, this is pretty interesting stuff. Wow, look at the moves that are happening. 
This is a once, not not necessarily a once in a lifetime, but almost a once in a lifetime opportunity to be in on something that big business is in on, but the regular person was there first. Do your own research, get into it, because it's not the future, it's the here and now. For all those people that think they don't understand, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, you use Venmo, right? You use Cash App, huh? You use Zelle. Same premise. No matter what anybody says, same premise. The idea of moving money quickly, same premise. Difference is, is that there are no caps over here. You know, I think Venmo, you know, all the rest of them, they have like a $2,500 or $5,000 cap on, you know, m- you know, moving money. Crypto, I can move as much as, much as I want. I just have to pay a small fee. Boom. Boom. So if I'm a grandmother or grandfather or grandparent that wants to help out a kid, you know, who's got, you know, school books or, or wants to, needs to pay tuition for college or whatever, I can send, you know, I can send them, you know, a few, a few thousand dollars like that, like that. And, uh, and believe it or not, that's right. Some colleges are accepting tuition payments in crypto. When you talk about adoption, we're talking about adoption at that level. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. If you like what I'm doing here, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and definitely, definitely hit that notification bell so that you know the next time I drop a, drop a new video. Until then, have a great day.